All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for your SummerSlam review for August 5th, 2023. I thought SummerSlam sucked, man. It was the worst pay-per-view for that WWE's done so far this year. Just terrible, man. Most of the matches weren't even that good. The one I thought that was going to be, or I'll talk about it after. Um, yeah, but most of the matches sucked. You had, uh, especially, the, I hate the ending. I couldn't believe the ending of that main event. So stupid and ridiculous, man. What is the point of Jimmy attacking Jay? And he just left two months ago at Night of Champion. Now he's already back with him. That makes no, this makes no sense. What was the, this, the booking of this is so stupid, man. It does not make any sense. So did uh, Paul Heyman get through to him now? Because every promo, he's like, oh, Jim, Jimmy, it's not my fault. It's not Roman's fault. It's not Solo's fault. It's not even your fault. It's Jay's fault that you end up in the hospital. This makes no sense. Uh, this is so stupid. So we cost Jay the title. How's he going to explain it now on SmackDown? This makes no sense. I don't know how to understand this now. And how much longer is the storyline going to go on for now? It's so dumb. It's been three years. Like, And then, then the press con or after WrestleMania this year, uh, Roman said they're in the top of the third inning. And now uh, last night uh, after SummerSlam, that press conference, Paul Heyman, it was just Paul Heyman. Somebody asked him, oh, are you guys in the third, uh, still in the third inning? He said, yeah, we're in the bottom of the third. And then in uh, baseball, there's nine innings. So by that logic, they're going to be the fourth in top of the fourth inning at WrestleMania 40 next year. So is this thing going to go on until like, I don't know, like 2030? It's so stupid, man. Oh, my God. So it's now, is this going to be Jimmy versus Jay at Payback now, the main event? Or are they going to do, just switch it up with uh, is it Jay and Solo? Yeah, Solo, they teased it again last night. If he's going to break up with Roman and he's going to join with Jay and then now Jimmy's back, he's in good graces with the bloodline. So it's going to be Jimmy and Roman versus Jay and Solo or is it just going to be the brothers feuding, Jay, Jimmy versus Jay? I don't know, man. This is also stupid. They're trying to they're trying to get him, get out of this storyline as much as they can, man. Because they, 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 they know they have nothing else right now. But the Judgment Day, it looks like they're going to be uh, button heads now. Because of all the, because of uh, since Damian Priest uh, entered into that match last night, tried to cash his contract, but it doesn't look like he was going to cash in. But Finn Balor didn't. He he thought he was going to cash in. All that nonsense. The ending was just so stupid. All right, so good things from last night. Uh, Brock Cody, I thought that match was good. That was easily the best match uh, last night. Eo Sky cashing in. And uh LA Knight finally. Yeah, you won the Battle Royal. Finally got a big win on a pay-per-view. Bad parts, Ronda and Shayna Baszler. That was easily the worst match. I don't know what the heck, what that was. That was terrible, man. They could have done like the Lions Den back in the day when Ken Shamrock I forgot was it did he fight Steve Blackman back in the day? Could have done that. They could have done the fight pit that, uh, that last year, I think. Uh, Matt Riddle and Seth Rollins. They could have done something like that. It could have done more moves and stuff. This was just terrible. Just, just in the ring and stuff. Uh, terrible. But yeah, my score's four. I give this pay per view a four out of ten for SummerSlam. Worst pay per view of the year for WWE. Terrible. All right, let's get to it. Um, First match, we got Logan Paul versus Ricochet. Logan Paul hit Ricochet with a neck breaker while Ricochet was on the set, on the middle rope, just hanging off of it. And then he hit a neck breaker. Logan Paul hit a running power slam for a two count. So I guess that's for uh, he's like trying to call out Braun Strowman with that. It looks like, and uh, Ricochet hit. Logan Paul with the spine buster. Then Paul hit Ricochet with the springboard clothesline. Logan Paul hit a Spanish fly. They both landed on their feet. He did it from the apron, and they both landed on their feet on the outside. And then Ricochet hit a Spanish fly. And they just both stayed down, I guess. And then Ricochet hit Logan Paul with the neck breaker from the top rope. 
And then look, uh, Logan Paul landed on his back. This was like a ball. I don't know what this move was supposed to be. It looked like it was supposed to be an RKO or like a regular neck breaker. But the way Logan landed, he like landed on his back and he like went back or whatever instead of landing on his front. I don't know what the hell happened there. Then Ricochet hit a springboard clothesline. Logan Paul countered it into a tornado DDT. Ricochet, he went for the shooting star press. But Logan Paul got his knees up and he got an ear fall. Then Logan Paul hit uh, Ricochet with a springboard frog splash for a two count. And then Ricochet hit uh, Logan Paul for uh, with a springboard moonsault for a two count. And then Ricochet, he went for the 630 and he missed it. And then uh, we couldn't see who it was. Well, I was writing the notes down. I missed this. Uh, Logan Paul's friend. Apparently gave him brass knuckles, and then uh, Logan Paul used the brass knucks. As soon as he hit Ricochet, the ref, like, looked away or whatever. He did, like, this or whatever. It was so stupid. Why would the ref do that? It makes the ref look dumb. And then, yeah, so Logan Paul wins, and then he hit the brass knucks into his tights. I thought this was just a middle, middle of the pack match. Nothing really exciting happened except maybe the ending there. And then... uh Logan, uh, the Samantha Irvin, that's Ricochet's girlfriend, the ring announcer. She announced Logan Paul as the winner, and then I think Logan Paul wanted her to say to her again because he just kept looking at her and stuff, and she was all sad and stuff. Uh, all right, next match: Cody Rose versus Brock Lesnar. Cody attack. Uh, Brock right before like before the ring bell started or the ring bell sounded and then Lesnar countered into a German suplex uh, Cody hit uh, Brock with a suicide dive Brock hit uh, he kicked Cody in the ribs you could hear like the loud thudding sound when he hit him it was brutal and then uh, Brock hit the uh, three German suplexes on Cody and then uh, Brock is just yelling or talking to Cody, save yourself. And then uh, so he he kept uh, Cody, Brock kept throwing uh, Cody out. Cody kept getting back in. He did this like four or five times. And then he he got, he, the more the more Cody kept getting back in the ring, he kept going back in, in the ring, the more and more, or, uh, more pissed off and pissed off uh, Brock Lesnar was getting. So uh, I think the fifth or sixth time, Lesnar's like, screw it, I'm, he hit an F5 outside the ring, and then he F5'd uh, Cody through the announce table. And then uh, all this is happening. Michael Cole standing there. He's like telling Cody, stay down, Cody. Live to fight another day. It's hilarious. Michael Cole getting all dramatic and stuff. And then back in the ring, uh, Brock hit a uh, German suplex. While he's hitting it, Cody ripped off the, the uh, padding for the turnbuckle. And then uh, Cody hit uh, Brock Lesnar with the steps on the outside. And then uh, Cody Rhodes hit an RKO. And then Cody hit a springboard RKO for a two count from the springboard off the top ropes. And then Brock applied the Kimura. Cody got to the ropes. And uh, Rhodes, uh, he pushed uh, Brock Lesnar into the exposed turnbuckle. And then Cody, he applied the Kimura lock. And then uh, I think did Brock get to the ropes, or did he, I can't remember if he powered out or got to the ropes. And then Cody hit uh, not one, not two, but three crossroads for the win. And then after the match, Brock Lesnar and Cody Rhodes had a stare down. And then they shook hands. I don't remember Brock Lesnar. He didn't shake a lot of people's hands after a match. So, yeah, that happened. And then, yeah, so this looks like this feud's over. Brock Lesnar's probably going to go away for a while and then come back for... He usually only comes back like the big cards, usually, or when they go overseas somewhere. Yeah. Um, so Brock Lesnar's probably going to be back to Rumble. Cody, who's he going to feed with now? Randy, I thought it would be Randy who would come back tonight, but he didn't come back. So it looks like... Hmm, I'm not sure who he's going to feud with. Maybe one of the guys in the Judgment Day, but it looks like it's going to be Balor versus uh, Damian Priest because of all, how all that went down later in the night. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure who's Cody's going to feud with. 
find out on Raw on, uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow night. All right, next up, we got the Slim Jim Battle Royal, SummerSlam Slim Jim Battle Royal. Originally, they said it was 20 people, but it ended up being 25. And then at 26, the Omos was like the surprise entrant. MVP came out before the match was going to start. He's like, oh, you can't do a Battle Royal without the Nigerian nut. The, what's his nickname? Nigerian Nightmare? No. Cody, uh, Cody's a nightmare. Uh, The Nigerian Giant, I think he called him. I can't remember. But anyways, uh, yeah, so he's in the match. So it was, 20, was it 25 or 20? Nah, I don't even remember. Who knows? Oh, so uh, Omos, he eliminated a bunch of people. He eliminated Apollo Cruz, JD McDonough, Rick Boogs, Riddle, and Butch. Gable eliminated uh, Giovanni Vinci and Kaiser. Bronson Reed, he eliminated Gable. Tommaso Ciampa eliminated... Uh, the, the two Viking Raiders guys, and then uh, Nakamura. Austin Theory eliminated uh, Rich Holland and Cameron Grimes. Santos eliminated Austin Theory. Cross eliminated Santos. And then Omos got eliminated by like, seven guys. AJ Styles hit like the phenomenal forearm, and then a bunch of guys just hit their moves on him, and then they pretty much uh, eliminated him. And then uh, LA Knight eliminated The Miz. AJ Styles eliminated Karrion Cross, And then... What was it? Uh, and then uh, LA Knight eliminated Bronson Reed. Sheamus eliminated Grayson Waller. So we're down to the final three. AJ Styles, uh, Sheamus, and LA Knight. AJ Styles is on the apron. Karrion Cross is still there. After being eliminated, he grabs AJ Styles' leg. And then Sheamus hit a bro kick on uh, AJ Styles to eliminate him. And then it was down to the last two, LA, and she LA Knight and Sheamus. And LA Knight ends up uh, eliminating Sheamus for the win. Finally, he got a big win. Hopefully, he gets pushed now and he goes after the U.S. title. If Santos loses to Austin Theory. Or he could... I don't know. He, I don't see him going after any of the title. Who else is he going to feud with? Unless you want to have him in a big feud with somebody else before he feuds with Austin Theory. So, yeah, we'll see what happens with LA Knight. That was an okay battle royal. All right. Next up. Oh, boy. Let's get to this. Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler in an MMA rules match. Shayna hit Ronda with a head kick. Ronda applied the arm bar. Shayna applied the ankle lock. And then uh, Shayna applied the sleeper lock. The crowd didn't give a damn about this match. They did not care. And at one point during the match, it looked like Shayna injured her arm or something. And the, the trainers came in to check on her. But uh, while this was happening, Ronda's like, oh, come on, finish the match or something like that. But yeah, whatever. Did not care about this match either. It's terrible. All right. And it uh, looks like Ronda's going to be taking a break, and then Shayna's going to be shooting with somebody else. So, yeah. And that's it for that. All right. Drew vs. Gunther. This match ended up being disappointing, man. I thought it was going to be the best match on the card. Or uh, best match of the night. Yeah, match of the night, I guess. But, yeah. So, we got Drew versus Gunther for the Intercontinental title. Michael Cole said on commentary that they never met one-on-one, -on -one, like any brand, any promotion ever. This is their first match ever one-on-one. -on -one. It was a slow start to the match. Not a lot going on. It was like a stalemate pretty much. Like they were feeling each other out. Uh, Gunther hit a back, sloop, uh, back suplex on the steps on the outside on Drew. Drew hit Gunther with a neck breaker. Gunther avoided uh, Claymore and hit a drop kick on uh, Drew. McIntyre hit a future shock DDT on Gunther. Gunther powerbombed uh, Drew for a two count. And then Gunther, he went to the top rope for a splash or whatever for an earfall. That's very rare for Gunther to go to the top rope. And both guys exchanged chops for a while. And they just chopped the crap out of each other, man. Just went on for a while, the chops. And then Drew hit uh, Gunther with a Claymore for a two count. And then Gunther hit a power bomb on Drew. Then 
Oh, I think that was it for the win. Back to right. What do you want after that? Yeah, so I guess that was yeah. So he won with the power bomb. I don't think is that his finishing move, Gunther's. I don't think so. No, his finishing move is. I don't think he used it, but yeah, this match ended up real disappointing. I thought it'd be uh, like there was real lot of quick moves back and forth. They should have spread some of the moves out. So it would have been a better pace of the match and let the crowd like uh like get into it a little bit more. But they were into it, but uh it, it just fell flat the this match. So we'll see if they do a rematch at payback. That's the next pay-per-view, or will these guys shoot to somebody else? I'm trying to think of who could Gunther feud with. Because I don't think they'll do Gunther and Cody. That doesn't make any sense. Because why would Cody go up to Intercontinental title? So I'm thinking, I'm thinking they're gonna probably do a rematch at Payback, I guess. But yeah, he's like a month. He's like less, uh, about a month away now for passing Honky Talk Man for the longest IC title reign or whatever. So yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Or mo most likely, I think it's gonna be a rematch. All right, next up we got Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor for the World Heavyweight Title. Balor hit uh, Rollins with a Russian leg sweep. Rollins hit Balor with a clothesline for a two count. And Seth hit a Falcon Arrow for a near fall. And then Seth Rollins, he hit three suicide dives on Balor. Balor hit a powerbomb into the barricade on the outside. And then he brought him back in the ring and did a sling blade. I think this is the same move he did the. Uh, to Seth Rollins seven years ago, like the, the this this feud is based off the seven years match, the match seven years ago at SummerSlam, and it's the same pay per view. So, I guess is bringing that back to an effect. And then uh, Balor applied the uh, armbar on Seth Rollins. Rollins powered out of it, and he uh, hit a frog splash for a two count. And then Seth Rollins hit a superplex. He was going for the Falcon Arrow, but uh, Balor countered it into a pin. Rollins kicked out, and then uh, Seth hit the pedigree. He got a two count. And then this is where it finally starts to get exciting or whatever. Damian Priest came out. Uh, yeah, so Damian Priest came out. Priest punched Seth Rollins while the ref was occupied with uh, Finn Balor. Then Finn Balor hit the pedigree. He got a two count. And then the rest of the Judgment Day comes out. Rhea Ripley and uh, Dom, uh, Dirty Dom, Dominic Mysterio. And then uh, Rollins, he hit a suicide dive, I think it was, on uh, Dominic Mysterio to get rid of him. And then, uh, so this is where they shot the angle here. Damian Priest left the briefcase. For Finn Balor, because uh, he wanted Finn Balor to use it while the ref was right. I think Rhea Ripley was distracting the ref on the other side. But then Finn Balor sees it. He's like, uh, what are you doing? You cash again or whatever? And then Finn Balor, or I mean, uh, Damian Priest gets up on the apron and they start arguing. And then, uh, so th by this time, Seth Rollins gets up while these guys are arguing. Finn Balor moves out the way and he hits Damian Priest. So Damian Priest goes to the outside, and then Balor hit the coup de grace for a near fall on Rollins, and then uh, Damian Priest he leaves the Money in the Bank briefcase. He left the briefcase on one side, and he runs all the way to the other side to uh, to like distract the ref or whatever, and then uh, Seth. By this time, Seth gets up while he's distracting the ref, and he hit the curb stomp on Finn Balor onto the onto the Money in the Bank uh, briefcase, and then uh, there was just a uh, and then uh, Damian Priest got down from the apron, and then that, that's how uh, Seth Rollins won. And then they showed a picture of <laughs> they showed a hilarious reaction from uh, Damian Priest. It was hilarious. There's probably gonna be there's probably memes of it on the internet already, but it was priceless his reaction. He was like a disbelief or disappointed or whatever you want to call it. But yeah. So yeah, things should get interesting now from uh, with the Judgment Day. 
between Finn Balor and Damian Priest. Looks like uh, it could be splitting up, but you never know because they tried that before and it didn't happen after Money in the Bank. But yeah, this time it looks like I mean, maybe things are going to get heated now between both of them on uh, Raw starting tomorrow. So we'll see what happens with that. Seth Rollins. I don't know. Who's he going to feud with now? Uh, can't do a, You can't do a third rematch. Rollins has beat Finn Balor twice now. He's going to use the same. Is he going to use the excuse? Oh, Damian Priest distracted me. Or whatever with the briefcase, he thought because I thought he was gonna cash in or whatever. That's kind of dumb. There's no point to keep doing this, yo. Seth Rollins is gonna probably beat him again if that happens. But yeah, we'll see what happens with that. All right, next up we got the triple threat women's match for the women's title: Oscar, Bianca, Belair, and Charlotte Flair. Oscar hit the German suplex on Charlotte Flair, and then Flair hit a crossbody on both of them. And then Charlotte hit a big boot on both competitors for a two count. Oscar hit a code breaker from uh, on uh, Charlotte Flair for a near fall. Charlotte hit Bianca with a spear, and then Bianca she hit a springboard moonsault on both of them. And Flair hit a. Uh, she hit a moonsault, but she botched it. I think she undershot or overshot it. I can't remember. And then Bianca hit Flair with a German suplex. Oscar hit Flair, or she applied the arm bar. And then Charlotte Flair got power bombed. And then Flair hit a moonsault on both uh, competitors. And then. Uh, so this is where, and then after this, this is where Bianca got hurt. Flair, I don't know what Flair, Flair on the top rope with her. I can't remember. They didn't have any photos of it in, uh, on the site. So I think it was Charlotte Flair and Bianca on the ropes. And then Bianca like fell out or something. I don't know what happened. Or like after Charlotte pushed. Yeah, Charlotte was with her up on the top rope. And then she landed and it, they didn't have the angle. Like even after, uh, after the move and they showed the replay, they didn't have like the right angle. I, can't, I guess the cameraman wasn't there when it happened. But it, it was like a loud thud or something. Maybe she like uh, sounded like she might have bro uh, broke something or something cracked or something. I don't know what it was. But then like a bunch of trainers came out, refs came out. So it looks like it looked like she legitimately injured herself. But uh, that didn't, it didn't end up being the case because she came back later in the match. And then Asuka hit a superplex on Charlotte Flair. Flair hit a uh, spear for a near fall. And then uh, Bianca came back. This is the point Bianca came back. She hit a 450 splash on Charlotte Flair while uh, Charlotte had the figure eight locked in on Asuka. I don't think, has Bianca ever done a 450 splash before? <laughs> Can't remember. But yeah, Charlotte Flair hit Bianca or she applied the figure eight. While this was going on, Asuka split, she spit the blue mist into Charlotte Flair's face. And then she tossed, uh, or what was it? Uh, yeah, so Bianca got the pinfall win. So Bianca became the new women's champ. And then after the, uh, yeah, after the match, Io Sky comes in and she cashes in. So now Io Sky is the, the new women's champ. So there'll probably be I'm trying to think who would feud with who. Eo Sky is probably gonna feud with uh maybe Bianca because she's got a gripe now because oh she's had an excuse I was injured and I was tired and stuff after a long triple threat match and you just came in there and cashed it in and then Oscar's got a gripe too because uh, she lost the title so she's supposed to get a rematch right away I guess. So, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. But, yeah, not a lot of exciting matches tonight. All right. Next up, we got the main event for the Undisputed Universal title. Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso in tribal combat. Very slow start to the match, but things picked up. Uh, Jey hit a super kick on Roman. Then he hit a suicide dive, and he tossed Roman to the steps outside the ring. Then Jey Uso set up a table outside the ring. 
Roman hit Jay with a drive-by drop kick that he does. Then Reigns went for a suicide dive. Oh no, uh, what was it? Uh, Jay Uso went for the suicide dive. Roman hit Jay with the kendo stick multiple times. And then uh, Roman, uh, he's got the kendo stick under uh, Jay's chin, under his jaw, and he's like, get up, little Jay. Get up, little Jay. <laughs> Hilarious. I love it when Roman trash talks during the matches. And then uh, Jay counters with the Superman. Hold up. Uh, yeah, so he countered a Roman Superman punch with a kendo stick shot. And then Jay hit another suicide dive on Roman. And then Roman hit Jay with a Superman punch in midair. That was pretty dope, I guess. And then Jay hit Roman with a Uso splash and a super kick. He got a two count. And then Jay grabbed the chair and he hit Roman a bunch of times with it. And then uh, Jay Uso, he went down to the ring and he got a bunch of chairs and he just uh, threw all the chairs into the ring. It was about seven or eight chairs, I think. Can't remember. And then Roman, he uh, powerbombed Jay onto the chairs. And then Roman, he set up a table in the corner inside the ring. A uh, new table. And then... Jay hit uh, Roman with the Samoan drop through the table on the outside. So that one's broken. And then Jay, he pulled out the, a leather strap or something. It was like a brown strap. And he hit Roman twice with it. Both shots, you could see there was like blood on Roman's uh, one. I think one behind his shoulder and one on his chest or stomach. I can't remember. But yeah, as soon as he hit him, you could see like the blood, like the shot where he hit him. Because the blood was starting, he, Roman was already starting to bleed. The two spots that Jay hit him with, with the uh, leather strap. And then they go into the crowd. And then uh, out of nowhere, Solo Sokoa shows up. There was a table set up there already. And Solo hit the spinning solo on uh, Jay Uso through the table. Solo, then he started to drag Jay Uso on the ground, like pull him back towards the ring. And then halfway through, he's like, screw it. I'm just carrying him on my back. And then he carried Jay to the ringside. And then uh, Solo and Roman went for the spike spear combo. And then uh, Jay got out of the way and Roman hit Solo with a spear. And then Jay, Jay Uso hit Roman with a spear of his own. And then he hit... Uh, uh, Jay Uso hit Roman with... Uh, or he had both guys with chair shots back and forth. And then Solo hit Jay with a super kick. Solo, uh, so at this point, Roman's down. It's near the barricade outside near the uh, timekeeper area. So, yeah, Roman's down. Solo's right there. Uh, Roman's telling him, uh, oh, uh, help me up or whatever. And uh, Solo's just, like, looking at him. He's not helping. He's not doing anything. just staring at him. And then this went on for a while. All this is going down, and then Jey Uso comes out of nowhere. He spears Roman through the barricade. So they're just teasing yet more that Solo's going to break away from the bloodline. They've been doing this for a few months now. And then, yeah, so Jay hit a spear. Roman goes through the barricade. And then some guy in a hooded, uh, in a black hoodie. And he had his, uh, he had part of his face covered. So he, all you could see is his eyes and his nose and stuff. So he shows up out of nowhere, and then the guy helped Roman, and he pulled uh, Jay out. Jay hit Roman with a spear, and he pinned him, and the uh, and it reveals it's Jimmy Uso. And then Roman speared Jay Uso through the table for the win. So Roman Reigns retains his world title, universal title. And yeah, so yeah, this, I don't know, this makes no sense, man. No sense is storyline. They're trying to get as much as out of it as much as they can. I don't know how much more they're gonna drag this thing out, but I don't know. It should be ending at WrestleMania, it looks like, but never know, man, with WWE. But yeah, the ending, I just hated the ending for this match. It sucked. But yeah, overall, I thought this was probably the worst pay-per-view that they've done so far. Give about a four out of ten.
Not a lot of the matches were good. Cody and Brock, I guess. Yeah, that was the best match. Worst match, Ronda, obviously Ronda and Shayna. And then, yeah, so I thought it was just bad, terrible uh, SummerSlam. And that was it for SummerSlam. See ya.